Hello everybody, this is Graham Anderson, and today I'm going to be looking at Distant Suns. Now the theme of this game is exploring outer space. You'll be leaving your home planet, finding black holes, making contact with alien races, and reaching out to the furthest corners of the universe. That sounds so thematic. But this isn't a line of roll and write games, or this game calls it a choose and write. On a player's turn, they're going to select which shape they're going to draw, and which shape all the other players are going to draw on that turn. You're going to be trying to fulfill the different missions, which usually involve covering or being next to a particular hex with a particular shape. The combination of mission goal, like reaching aliens or exploring black holes, and what shape is required to do that is going to change every game. You're also trying to get to the far corners of the board before the other players to try and get the maximum points. But in your race to fulfill the missions and reach the outer worlds, you also need to be, make sure that you're visiting the alien spaces, or they're going to count as negative points at the end of the game if you haven't met them. So, will this game be an out-of-the-world hit, or should it just be left on the launch pad? Let's get it to the table, see how it's played, and we'll come back to my final thoughts on Distant Suns. So here is Distant Suns set up for three players. Each player has a sheet and a pencil. You take the ten exploration tiles and randomly place five of them along the board, and put the rest back in the box. These are the shapes you're going to be drawing during the game. Take one of the color of mission tiles and randomly place them on the board. Take the other color and place them along the other side of the board so that they match the previously placed ones. The modules are placed in a stack from 1 to 5, and for the exploration tiles you have on the board, put the matching shape templates beside the board to help you draw. The goal of the game is to get the most points after three rounds. Each round will consist of a number of turns that can vary from round to round, usually between 4 and 5 per round. You'll get points by completing the mission tiles, reaching the outer world spaces, and completely surrounding treasure bonuses. You're also going to lose points for each alien that is left uncovered on your board. Each turn is split into the assign and then draw phase. In the assigned phase, the active player will take the top module and place it along the edge of the board, making sure that it slides into two notches. The module board is split into two. This side is the side for the active player, and the other side is for all the other players. The active player can place the module on either side of the board. Once the module is placed, the active player must draw the shape under their side of the placed module, and all other players will draw the shape under their half. There are some drawing rules though. When drawing a shape, it must be adjacent to at least one other previously drawn shape. The first shape you draw must cover a space next to the starting space, which is the bottom left-hand corner of your board. You must also draw the entire shape. No part of the shape can cover previously drawn shapes, overlap any other shapes, or go off the board. You can rotate or mirror the shape as you please, and you can use the templates to help you draw. You can cover the alien spaces and the upgrade spaces, but you can never cover the starting space, treasure spaces, nor the outer world spaces. Once the shape is drawn, Draw the corresponding shape symbol in it to help keep track of what shape it is. Once everyone is done drawing, you go to the next turn. If on a player's turn they cannot do the assign phase, that is there are no two adjacent notches to slide the tile into, then the round is over and you prepare for the next round. By restacking all the five modules, and the player who could not place takes the first turn of this round. If you finish the third round, the game is over and you go to final scoring. Now a few notes before scoring. There are two special spaces on the board. The spaces adjacent to the outer world spaces. The first person to cover one of these will circle the larger of the two numbers in the outer world, and all other players will cross it off their board. If other players also cover a space next to an outer world's tile later on in the game, they will circle the lower value. Upgrade spaces, when covered, are marked on your board and can be used on a later turn. To use an upgrade, cross off a previously marked upgrade, and an upgrade will allow you to ignore one hexagon in the shape you were drawing. The shape must stay together, and you can use up to two upgrades per turn. For final scoring, you evaluate the mission and required shape cards. For the alien tile, count the number of aliens covered by the required shape as shown below it. The same is true for the upgrade tile. Count the number of upgrades on your sheet covered by the required shape. For the treasure, since they cannot be covered at any time during the game, count how many treasure spaces have at least one of the required shapes adjacent to it. Each treasure space can only be counted once, no matter how many of the required shapes are around it. For the largest cluster tile, find the largest grouping of the connected required shapes and count how many of the required shapes make up that cluster. And finally, the black hole. For each black hole that you have drawn on the board, count how many times the required shape touches it. For this scoring, you will count each shape once that touches the same black hole. Next, you see how many points you get for each mission based on how many times you fulfilled it using the provided chart. Add the points you got from reaching the outer worlds. You then get 10 points for each treasure space that is completely surrounded with covered spaces of any shapes. 
And finally, you subtract 5 points for each alien space that is not covered on your board. And the player with the most points is the winner. Let's get back to see what I thought about Distant Suns. So, theme and components. Since this is a choose and write game, the theme is pretty non-existent. I'm not going to hold that against the game, but I also really felt it didn't do very much for the game. I was never sure whether these shapes that you're drawing represent your movements, or your scans that you're sending out, or what. It doesn't make much sense. But like I said, the theme means nothing to the gameplay, and neither helps nor hinders it. For the components, I quite like these boards. The, uh, double, the dual layer boards that they hold uh, the missions. I also do like that there were these shapes that they gave you so you can draw them. Uh, I do wish that they had more than one copy of each shape, especially at four players you often have to wait to use them because they are very handy for the rotation and, and mirroring them to see how they're going to fit on your board. There's a large pad of double-sided paper here. Um, so there's not a lot of components in the box, but what they're there are very functional and look good. Now on to the gameplay. For this I felt that it was just okay. I'm not 100% sure how I felt about the idea that 6 is the maximum number of times you can draw the same shape over the entire gameplay. I know this is the same for some games that are flip and right with a finite set of cards, but there can be some times when it's actually going to be less than 6. And just depending on the module placements, I kind of like and dislike that at the same time. I do like the mechanism of picking you know, what you're going to draw and what the other players are going to draw. You can flip these modules kind of around as well, and you can pick either side. But I found that racing out to the outer worlds and concentrating on one or two missions to be the most effective kind of way to play this game. Often in a four player game, you're watching what the outer worlds people are racing for and either changing direction or picking maybe pieces that were going to get you there fastest. It really felt like it didn't matter. The games do start to feel very similar to each other. Yes, the shapes change from game to game and the combination of mission changes, but it really doesn't feel like a significant change. Couple that with the slow feeling of the game, you know, it takes a while to, for people to figure out what the best position of the chosen shape to draw. And this is going to be a personal thing. One of my favorite things in a something and right game is the little burst of excitement you get for combos. You know, you mark something off here on your board and, oh, wait a minute, I can mark something off here as well, which gives me one of these, which I can use down here. This game doesn't have that. Now, you do get the upgrades, which can be used later, but there's nothing useful right away that you're going to get. And I kind of really miss that in this style of game. And one last thing I was not a big fan of is the drawing itself and just how messy everything is at the end of the game. I mean, you saw my completed sheep. It looks like a mess no matter how many times I do it. But that, again, it's just going to be a personal thing. You're never going to be finishing off the game and say, hey, look what I drew. But again, that's a personal preference. It doesn't affect the gameplay, but for me, I just I like to be able to hold something up at the end of the game and say, this looks good. So would I recommend this game? I don't think I would. At all player accounts, as soon as I was finished playing, I kind of forgot in the game and moved on to something else. It's not a bad game. It was okay. I like the look of the game and the components, especially the double layer boards and the drawing aids. I think I do like the main mechanism where you can kind of somewhat predict what shapes you're gonna be able to draw during the round. I do like the different ways of scoring and you gotta make sure that you can't be doing them all. But I also felt the game was a little too slow and lacked those moments of the game that kind of got you excited because of what you just pulled off. I was also not a huge fan of the mess I always seem to be left with at the end of the game and trying to figure out what scores and what doesn't because you weren't quite sure where the borders of your drawings were. So I'm going to give this game a 6 out of 10. It's not a bad game, but then again, it's not really a good game. It's just an okay game. And in a genre where we have some really good examples of this type of something in writing games, just being okay means you kind of get lost in the crowd. And that is ultimately what I think is going to happen to this one. And that's it for the moment. Until next time, thanks for watching.